I would make jokes and she would hysterically laugh at anything I would float. I really loved the way she looked. Her sexy and curvy back made tingles through my body. I thought I had finally done it. Got someone sincere with me. Someone I could make my own. But in my imagination, I had even thought about buying flowers for her and proposing to her on my knees. She was more interested in the way I looked. Everything fell apart. The pieces I had all joined ended up in shreds of my broken consciousness. She had aired my ass again. After all the effort I put into getting to know her on Snapchat, what would everyone think about me at college now? A desperate left out by everyone? Maybe they would think it's all my fault. After all, who gets stumped by every single girl in his class? I thought as I opened my secret world on the porn site again, where hundreds of females wanted me for just ten dollars. Life had come to this standstill again. Walking down the Fifth Avenue, life had seemed to be a glass case in which I had lived alone since my childhood. Hundreds walked past me, in their hurry to embrace the warm hug of their partners. As the sun hung low from the blue mountain scope, I never had any hurry to go anywhere. Nobody waited for me anywhere. God. If only Dad had listened to me and we never left Africa, I wouldn't have been walking home like this. Was the only thing I thought on my way back from college. Son, here's the job. I just can't dump this promotion and also you need this degree. So you'll be able to work in Canada, so you can finally leave this useless country. Eh? Who knows how many good friends you are going to meet today? Hmm? My son. Hey! They've cost the electricity, yo! Oh. Ah! Oh. Chai! Africa! Oh. Africa! Oh. Africa! Oh. Africa! Oh. Was my dad's soothing reply. Cindy. Esther and Enrica. I can never forget their names, and though I still followed them on Instagram, none of us could remove the barrier which long miles of a drive had put between us. Life is just letting go of old people and finding new ones. At least I believed in that philosophical notion as I entered Carleton University. My heart throbbed and I was exhilarated beyond my senses. And I saw all of these hot chicks walking past me. Oh the teenage surge of championing the most attractive girl was a burden I took seriously enough. But, yeah, of course, sorry to interrupt. If you were enjoying this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm to know that I'm just not wasting my time on this platform. Thanks. First class, I was brimming with so much confidence because of all of those compliments I got from high school. I can still remember vividly when this happened. It was probably in 11th grade or something. We all know you look damn sexy, Pump. You still need to focus on the ball as well. Naomi would say she ran past me in the field. But I had too much anxiety in high school. I could never mix with people. It wasn't until I got the ego boost that came from my so-called attractive. Because of this, I walked with an aura of natural attraction and hyped myself up to forget about it. I wanted to give my best to it. Believe it! I remember Paris's offer, the girl next door. If you need anything here, don't be shy to drop a text. How could I have missed it? It was a sign that she was interested in me. So one night, I lay in my bed and I text. Hey there. She was online and I expected to get an interesting reply, but unfortunately, she never did. The next day I saw her getting out of her dorm room, and I wasn't totally sure what she was doing with the door, but it seemed like she had a problem with it. When she finally noticed me, she seemed shocked. She then went on to awkwardly say, Oh, <laughs> hi, Pump. I hope you're doing good. She acted as if she hadn't gotten any text from me. This was definitely plain fucking rejection. I 
went into depression for a bit. After all, I couldn't get any clue of what was wrong with me. I thought, but always without an answer. I didn't give up though. Scrolling on my YouTube homepage, though what seemed like to be an endless lonely night, I stuck on this man's video who gave free relationship advice. He indeed gave some interesting but expensive tips. So the next day after our poetry class, I went straight to the cafeteria. Lulu was sitting there, and from that looked a really lonesome lady to me. I ordered sandwiches and shakes for us. If you don't mind, can I? Of course, she carelessly replied, searching for something in her voluminous book. After five minutes of sitting together, the magic started to work. I really like people who are into Byron's poetry, said Lulu. I quickly confessed that he had been my favorite since high school. Our first meeting went nice and I hoped to carry it on. The following day I ordered another meal and went straight for her table. But this time she wouldn't say anything after we exchanged hellos. Are you busy, Lulu? I asked caringly. Actually, I am expecting someone. What? Can you please excuse me? What? Her words rang terribly as I saw her leaving arm in arm with a six feet tall guy named Brian. I couldn't hide my tears after I headed home with a box full of drinks. I tried to reason with myself as I was getting a warm bath. After all, I was too presumptuous. She might have been hooked up with Brian already, I hopelessly told myself. It did cause me so much pain. <laughs> but I at least felt that there was a fine trick to save me from another wave of depression. The days were endlessly boring and the vacations I had lost all interest in my video games. I would keep scrolling through the walls of beautiful girls. For instance, imagining this random influencer texting me miraculously and dying to be my girlfriend. But when the magic of the fantasy would fade, I would go down to the 5th Avenue, roaming around the busy streets in the snow, feeling as lonely as ever, just trying to break the monotony. Fate had yet to disclose the last When I joined a random community service group I found online, I thought it was a good idea to pick someone from there who didn't know who I was and who didn't know about my unsuccessful trial with girls. So I started texting the super cute girl who was really active in the group. For a long time we had a really deep conversation. I would make jokes and she would hysterically laugh at anything I would float. I really loved the way she looked. Her sexy and curvy back made tingles through my body. I thought I had finally done it. Got someone sincere with me. Someone I could make my own. But in my imagination, I had even thought about buying flowers for her and proposing to her on my knees. She was more interested in the way I looked, and I could well see because she would always ask for my pictures. Whenever she would push me, I would think about all the unsuccessful tries I had taken with the girls from my class, and I would postpone it. But as soon as she said these words, Yes, baby! I have a deep liking for you. I miss you, and I really want to meet you tomorrow. I got the ego boost and courage to send her my hand. If you ain't gonna kiss what happened next, the bitch blocked me. What? How was this even? I couldn't make anything out of it. I went into the state of mind that perhaps I may be lonely and depressed forever. A week later, I was swiping through Tinder. A strange revelation dawned upon me. Maybe I wasn't handsome at all. Back in high school, Naomi actually taunted me when she praised my physical features. But whatever it was, I couldn't know for sure. Because even after using the hottest pic I had on Tinder, I couldn't get any likes from a single girl out of the hundreds that I had liked. I could never understand the concept when I saw how many horrible people there are who were even worse socially than I was, but still had girlfriends. I found refuge in the tub and I watched it every day and night in this addiction because I had concluded one thing. Maybe there was nothing wrong with me after all. I guess I am just meant to be alone. You just gotta know how to live. 
there's no help, you just gotta find how to eat See I've been on my own solo nights in the streets It's been raining all day, I feel so cold I hear the thunder speak See I just reached my peak, still peaking So I can be my brother's keeper Waves on the ocean, and the blood in me is flowing thicker And the hole in my heart's getting deeper I'm trying to get out, but I keep sinking I'm trying to head out, but I keep thinking it's crazy, I'm so fed up My intuition is so lit up I'm not available, I'm trying to seek knowledge Might have dropped out of college But I kept going harder Switching colors like gelato Trick or treat, this shit